So I guess we can start, right? Okay. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Uh, sorry, I'm just a little bit, uh, you know, more nervous, let's say. It's, uh, it's my first presentation after so much. So welcome to State of Wikifunctions 2024. Uh, hopefully, you will learn a bit about what Wikifunctions is in this introduction that I will give you. Then I will leave the floor to my colleague, Sharvani for the rest of the presentation. Uh, so let's start from the very beginning then. Uh, what is Wikifunctions? It's the newest Wikimedia project that has been launched to collaboratively create and maintain a library of code functions. A function is basically uh, a programming thingy that makes you change an input into an output. It's something more technical than that, but that's as easy as you can, as you can get it. And we do this project to support the other Wikimedia projects and beyond in the world's natural and programming languages. What does it mean? We'll see it in a bit. So Wikifunctions is here at wikifunctions.org. We launched the project on July 28th of last year. So we're slightly more than one year old. So happy birthday. Uh, And now, for the fun part, here's a, here is a function. What is a function? So basically, what we have here is on the, on the left column is something that resembles mostly Wikidata. It's a label, description, and aliases. So what is the function? What the function does, the description? And what could be another name to name the function? In this case, it's an addition, but you can make it, uh, you can name it plus, or you can put the, the, the plus sign, or so on, and so, and so on and so forth. At the top of the, of, the, of the right column here, you see, there's the try this function. So this is actually the function in, in motion. You have the input, you click on run, and then the function outputs something. In this case, you put like two in the, in, in, the first part, uh, in the first part, two in the second part. You click on run function, and hopefully it will give you four as a result. Right, the, uh, right here, we have the implementations, which are the basic part. It's uh, how the function actually works. Programming languages, we were talking about the world's programming languages. For now, we have only J um, JavaScript, Python, and Composition, which means that in case you have a, fu have a complicated function, you can reuse other functions already existing on, on Wikifunctions to actually compose a function. In this case, this is very simple, so we don't need, uh, well, actually we have a composition, but uh, so uh, I, I'm proven wrong by, by the very start. But anyway, usually for some uh, simple, uh, simple uh, functions can be composed into more complex functions. And then here at the, ba at the bottom, you have the test part, which is, is the function properly running? So is two plus two equals four or equals five. Of course, depending on the test that you're doing, it should either go right or fail. And sometimes this depends on what you're testing. So what you can do with, with wiki functions is here. You can create already the functions, the implementations, and the test case. You cannot still link the implementations and the functions, but that's something that we will probably get into the, into the uh, question part. You can use several kinds of functions, so booleans, strings, lists, numbers, and so on and so forth, dates, so on and so forth. And you can call functions from tools, gadgets, and third-party apps. What we are, we are striving to do this year, and this is actually, I'm already spoiling, uh, spoiling a bit what, uh, what Charvani will say, is uh, uh, the part about calling the functions from Wikipedia articles and moreover uh, working on uh, the wiki, wiki data lexemes. Uh, if you want to start gently with wiki functions, it's like, okay, I want to try it out, but I don't know how to program. What can I do? Here are uh, a couple of, uh, of suggestions. First of all, run the functions, try them out. Just try to understand what a function is, what sh should be the input, and what should be the output. 
And then you can always translate the labels. Uh, we were talking about world's natural languages. Wikifunctions is a multilingual project. That means that we can, uh, that we are actually catering to all the Wikimedia languages. So you can translate it into your own language, Italian, Ukrainian, Croatian, uh, Igbo, Yoruba, um, Boyunnaki, whatever. Um, and then, of course, you can, so that you can improve our multilinguality. And then you can try to create a function without creating the implementation, without getting too much programming into it. Just try to create something, just to su or suggest to the community to create a new function, and then let the wiki do its miracle, as always. Let, let somebody else do the work for once. <laughs> Uh, so this now uh, we are getting to the fun part, which is abstract Wikipedia. Abstract Wikipedia is uh, something that will uh, that will be constructed on uh, wiki functions that will be built on wiki functions, and the goal is to allow more people to share in more knowledge in more languages by allowing contributors to create and maintain language independent content which can be used, in turn, to generate natural language text in many languages, starting from functions stored in Wikifunctions and data stored in Wikidata. What does it mean? It means that Wikifunctions is not just about mathematical things, it's also about natural language functions. You can try to manually input a word and get a plural out of it. This is, a, um, this is an example of English plural, which is rather simple, but try to make uh, something like in a Croatia, in Croatian language or in Yoruba language, in a language that has cases. So you can have the function like, give me the genitive of this, of this word, give me the accusative of this, uh, of this word, and so on and so forth. So that we can create more complex functions. In this case, statement of birthplace. Uh, as you can see, the, the, the input here is Albert Einstein and Ulm. And the output is a, compl is a complete sentence that says, Albert Einstein was born in Ulm. This is what we mean by creating, by creating language independent text. Uh, we mean that basically for every language we want to store language functions that can create automatically text. To do what? That's a good question. That's our vision. Functions that can create prose. In this case, we have an example of Marie, about Marie Curie, so that we can use the language functions from Wikifunctions and combine them with data coming from Wikidata to actually get text. Now, if you think that you're, if you're from English Wikipedia or French Wikipedia or German Wikipedia, of course, you already have something about Marie Curie. But think about the, language, the, the Wikipedia languages that do not have a lot, of language, uh, not a lot of articles. Just think about creating a natural placeholder for those articles, for all those missing articles, and to, to help jumpstart new articles on those versions. Just think of all the African languages or the South American in the indigenous languages or the South Asia or the South Asian languages that are lagging behind. In this way, we can try to actually get some, uh, uh, some, some text that works. And then the community might decide on their own if they want to keep the placeholder for the, for the time being or use the placeholder just as a start point to actually write an article. Think of the white sheet syndrome. It's like starting from scratch is really complicated. But if you have a help, then you can actually work your magic much better than this. And if there are changes in Wikidata, let's say that there is a mistake. Uh, she was, uh, that Marie Curie she was not awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1909, but in 1911 then you can, with a simple change in Wikidata, the resulting text on the, uh, on, in abstract Wikipedia will be changed uh, uh, as well. So uh, this is gen a very gentle introduction. I hope uh, there will be more questions about it. Uh, that's what we are here for. Uh, you can join us at wikifunctions.org, or you can join also the Telegram channel at Wikifunctions. Beware, there's a bot that uh, checks for spammers, so you have to manually insert a number 
while uh, you will be asked to, to insert a number and and then you'll you'll be in but you have five minutes to do it so just just so you know because we we had problems with other join, people joining no, not understanding that they had to manually input the number and they were kicked out so uh so that's it for uh, for me uh, i'll leave the floor to sharvani and thank you very much if you have questions later or i'll, uh, uh, I'll be at the hackathon room uh later on please sharvani Thank you, Luca. Um, so with that introduction, I think we all have a little overview of what Wiki Functions is all about. It is a powerful code base of functions. Uh, more importantly, it's our central infrastructure to one day have a really meaningful abstract content um, and to one day have really useful um, abstract co uh, content and like automated translated content. Um, I, we released Wiki Functions a year to this date, as we discussed. I just want to walk you through what we did in that year um, and how our numbers look after a year. And I also want to give a brief introduction of what we plan to do in the year to come. So since our uh, deployment, we have had about more than 2.6 million page views. Uh, the way we count a page view is every time a page web page is requested, uh, in the context of wiki functions here, of course. Um, and our monthly numbers are at uh, 249K. This is a particular month, and we have grown up to that. Uh, it could be more or less, uh, depending on which, function, uh, which month we are looking at. More importantly, I want to point you out to the daily data. Our daily data was around 2,000 2, page views when we started last year, and we are now at 10,000. That is about a 400% four, growth. And any time there is such a huge growth, there's a nice story behind it. So I want to walk you through that story. What all did we do to get there? So when we released Wiki Functions, it was a limited release. It was read-only. Not everyone could edit and create Wiki Functions as today. But within a few uh, quarters, we democratized it and opened up to all Wikipedians for uh, editing. And we also opened up our API for third-party uh, use of our functions. And we have some tools, wonderful tools generated because of that, which I'll come to in the slides forward. Um, just to create some security around what kinds of functions get created, what implementations get created, because it's a sensitive area, we created the role of functioneers. Um, th these are special rights given to certain uh, users uh, who can connect an implementation to a function. If you're more curious about how to get these rights or whom to contact, I've left a link over there. Please access it in our slides. Um, just to give you an overview of what uh, the function right looks like, the button over here, which whether you can connect or disconnect an implementation or a test, um, comes with the function rights. Uh, so do the checkboxes next to it. Um, the second part we did is we closely listened to community, be it uh, design or be it any uh, kinds of useful suggestions. Uh, one such suggestion was when we first deployed Wiki Functions, we deployed it in two parts. The first part would be to gather the data, and the second part was where the code was actually getting executed, the more sensitive part. Um, and we tried to do this within a virtual machine for security. And as pointed by community members, we, could, uh, we, g we gathered that feedback to see that it could be more secure if we ran it within the environment of a WebAssembly um, environment, um, so which added another layer of security. If you want to know more details, I've also linked it over there, and James is always here. Um, which kind of led us to uh, the numbers of the unique devices? Sorry, I, ca I cannot see the numbers. Uh, we've had about 390K uh, unique devices. Uh, it is triangulated to know which device it is, unique users, you can say, uh, with different devices. Um, and around, like I said, it differs from month to month, 133K per month. Um, and I have the same monthly data. This is not daily, but it's the same monthly data charted out uh, in a map. I've stopped it around April or May. And how did this happen? How did we facilitate this kind of growth? Uh, the usage of types is a big thing. 
on, on uh, wiki functions. So throughout the year, we facilitated with a lot of different types, um, like the natural uh, numbers or lists, uh, or day of the month, uh, different types like this. Soon we will have dates. And if you're curious about like how that would aid better functions, I just have a screenshot here. Um, this is a function that counts a particular day in a month in a year. So how many Mondays are there in February in 2024? We can think of usages in like getting a coursework done or for, for a semester, things like that. Um, this function would not be possible without the three new types we, uh, we released last year. So uh, that's the power of types, and more uh, important types are yet to come. Um, and we also had, along the way, we had a lot of UX improvements. And this is something we are very proud of. Um, every quarter, quarter after quarter, the same theme appears that two things are common in that thread. One, we always think about handheld devices, because we are aware in most of the countries around the world that is the best way for them to connect with the rest of the world. Mobile data is getting cheaper every day. So we always uh, think of it. I wouldn't say we are perfect for uh, small screens, but we're getting there uh, one step at a time. Um, and we also think of non-English users at every step of our design. And we are a very specially situated team in that way, because it's not so much as we are helping the multilingual users. It's almost as if we depend on them. We want functions to be created in your own language or non-dominant languages, underserved languages. So I feel in, in, in that way, uh, it makes our team special. Um, other than uh, this overarching idea of improving the UX uh, of the uh, product, we also have particular UI improvements, which make it just easier to use wiki functions. I didn't want to get into detail of too details of too many, but I just wanted to take one example. Earlier, we had this design of splitting the function about, there's an about page, if you can see, and then a details page. The about tab would have uh, details about the function, and you could run the function through there. But if you wanted to know anything about the function of the implementations or the tests or anything about the function, you'd have to go to the details page, which was a lit, uh, little not free flowing. So our designer came up with this idea of, uh, this was also consistent with the other designs we had within the product. Um, but this was more understandable. Everything was in one place. Small improvements like this, I feel, help users feel more motivated to create functions or understand functions that are existing. Um, this is the uh, function statistics we have, and uh, the best part is we crossed 1,500 this week in the Wikimania week. Um, yeah. yes. And uh, we have more than 2,500 implementations and 4,400 4, and more tests to go with them. And functions are getting created everywhere. This is the part I said, like the, our third-party APIs are used to create tools. If you're curious about the Lexeme Forms tool that is on Wikidata, I've given the link of both how, what the tool is about in the Wikidata link, as well as directly to the tool, so you can use, uh, to generate word forms uh, of new entries on Wikidata. We're also really proud that our community has created more than 33 different language functions. And just to show you how cool that is, uh, I have picked three examples because we can't go through too many. I'm already running, running out of time. But these were some of the favorites. Um, this is a Polish um, function. Yes. <laughs> is that right? It's uh, natural number one. Oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And there is another thing I love about this function, not um, other than the fact that it's a nat natural language generation function, is that the label and the description is more prominent in Polish than its English equivalent. So it's a language, not the language, always to and start with. Unreadable. It's unreadable anyway to me, <laughs> but on the web page. Oh, OK, sorry. But I just took a screenshot just to show. But if you go on the website and access it, you'll be able to read it. Um, this is a function in uh, checking a Japanese character, Han Japanese character. 
uh, whether it is a character or not, true or false. This is an Igbo function, which checks for vowels. So we have many great such functions in 33 languages. We have about 40 uh, active users each month spread across uh, many different countries. I've just taken the top 10 countries. You can see Taiwan and Ghana there, but overall, those are our top 10 countries. You see certain spikes when we have events like this. Wiki, Wikimania would have created a spike for us. Uh, I thought it was just cool to look at this. Uh, we also have unique devices from more than 200 countries. I've only shown some of them, uh, but our users are spread around the globe. So that was the year in review. Uh, what's ahead of us? We're bu building this really cool product within Wikifunctions with all, all its facilitation, but on its own, it's, it could be more useful with an integration into some articles within Wikipedia. So that's the main goal we have for the year to come. And we have recognized a few target wikis based on uh, different characteristics, their size, um, the availability of a working group for us to work with iteratively with them. Uh, Bengali, Malayalam, Hausa, Igbo, and uh, Dagbani are our target languages for that. So if you are any of the community members in, that, uh, in those languages, please reach out to us or we will reach out to you. Please keep us in mind. Um, so the way we are going about this is uh, we didn't know where to start, so we conducted a research in the uh, past, past quarters. You can uh, see the research report. I've given a link to that. Um, out of those research outcomes, we'll choose one which is more feasible and what we can work with, and we'll prototype it in the coming quarters, and we'll build it locally and deploy it. And in each step, we want to iteratively design, build, test, and learn from it and we'll have user groups uh, helping us do that. That's the plan. Uh, the timelines are not um, strict, but we are going through them. We are learning new things as we go in each step. Um, we, are also, uh, we also understand the uh, gravity of using Wikidata inside Wikifunctions. It becomes more powerful, yes. Um, so that is also one of our goals for this uh, year, just to show about the power of uh, using Wikidata inside. This is a function for plurals in Spanish. And if there is no implementation, as there shouldn't be, but if you were to create an implementation, it would just be hard-coded and less useful than if you get data from Wikidata and actually see its form and singular and plural, more meaningful functions will come out of that integration. We're, these are certain possibilities. We are not committing to this work, but these are the teams we have in mind. Uh, we want to work more with Wikidata team about the possibility of descriptions via Wikifunctions or pair with the language and internationalization team for opportunities to see where Wikifunctions can be useful. Um, and none of these work would have been possible without a great team. I get to work with brilliant minds every day, some of them. So just a shout out to our wonderful team. Thank you. If you have any questions, James, I would like you to feel it. <laughs> oh, uh, we need a mic. Yeah. Uh, is there a microphone? OK. Just to be clear, these are all server-side functions. Even though JavaScript is involved, there are no client-side functions. Is that correct? Yeah. OK. Um, and you mentioned there is an API. So any data, for example, if I wanted the accusative of a, a noun that in a language that had multiple declensions, somebody would have to look that up in a, in a, a dictionary someplace. So that would yeah. come from Wikidata. OK. Is a return always HTML or markup? That's for you. <laughs> hey, so uh, the actual function call returns um, are custom JSON objects, but then the content within that um, is going to be a type, a, a wiki function's type. The ones that are going to get embedded in Wikipedia articles at first will just be plain text. Eventually, that may be HTML fragments or something else. Eventually, that could be a raw SVG file, like dynamically create a chart for you or a sound file or whatever, right? Like it's not limited technologically, but we are gonna crawl before we walk, before we run, so plain text first, please. And sorry, I'm taking a bit, but uh, one sure. more. There's, uh, there are over 4,000 functions. How do I find the one I want? 
Yeah, so so our search interface isn't brilliant yet. Um, that's something we're kind of pushed off to later, but that's definitely, I mean, you type a word and see if it comes up. Uh, hopefully it matches. There's a catalog that the community maintains which has a kind of listing of example functions. Okay. Uh, yeah. I can see you, you would, yeah. you would uh, mind. Okay, so those, first. those, yeah. Like, yes. When Wikidata first started, there was lots of discussion about how easy it would be for like the communities who fun who like they who is using data from Wikidata to like update that. Are we just adding an extra like layer of complexity to be able to edit Wiki Wikipedia and Wiki projects if like you have to like work on Wiki function code? I would say our mandates are different. We are, uh, Wikidata is more into creating that library, that rich library that people can use in many brilliant ways. And ours is one way. To our ultimate goal is to create reliable abstract content. So in that, we will use the Wikidata, but I, I wouldn't consider us as, as an extra layer of uh, complexity. Or at least we try not to be. Not to be, yes. And we'll also learn from them. Um, there will be uh, functions that will be uh, very hard to implement uh, in a usual way by programming. So do you consider to implement a possibility of functions based on neural networks? Because, uh, for example, some languages, especially uh, Slavic languages, are in fact so complicated that you will need like uh, uh, 5,000 uh, lines of code to do something that in English is done in five lines of code. Yeah, so the very quick answer there um, is that um, we have not built that, but it's not, a, it's definitely a possibility. And, you know, especially being, br building in the kind of human feedback loop would be really valuable. I know we're at time, or over time, but. There are two more questions if we. Oh, uh, no, we are. Two start. minutes before the next okay. speaker speaks. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> very, okay. very quick. Very well. So, uh, so you. Uh, you said that the return currently that can be embedded in wiki pages is plain text. Yeah. Will that plain text be parsed as part of the page's wiki text? No, it will be plain text. It will not be parsed? No. Not marked. Okay. 